G'day, I'm Scotty Tucker, and in this series I'm taking my 20 plus years of experience working with water and shrinking it down into bite-sized educational videos to help you better manage your water body. So if you want to learn how to manage your water body better, hit the subscribe button below. So before we go into how you treat the water, I guess we should first talk about why it's muddy in the first place. Now this is going to be very unpleasant for a lot of you because I'm going to take you back to your high school chemistry days and what a nightmare. I hated high school chemistry. Anyway, um, if my teacher could see me now, she'd be telling me I told you you'd use chemistry in your normal life, so hats off to her, she was right. Anyway, so why a dam is muddy is normally because the soil particles, and again, going back to your chemistry days, if you look at uh, your atomic charges of things, and of atoms and molecules, you have uh, ionic charges that are positive or negative. And what happens is that you have these really small soil particles that have the same ionic charge. So if you've got, for example, soil particles that are both positively charged, it means that they're staying in suspension because these charges are just butting up against each other and they're not allowing the soil particles to sink. So that's essentially what flocking is in a nutshell, is that you figure out what the best product is to use that's going to add an opposing charge to those suspended soil particles and you add the flocculant and it makes the soil particle heavy enough that it sinks. Now the issue with that, or the, the consideration with that, is that you really need to look at why it's like that in the first place. So in a lot of cases you can dig out a dam and it's muddy from the start because that's just the nature of the soil and there's not really much you can do about it. Um, so the best thing to do when you dig a new dam is just leave it for a while and see if it settles itself. Um, if it doesn't settle itself then you might need to then start investigating uh, flocking. Other reasons why you might get muddy dams is that uh, it might actually in time settle on its own if it was uh, in, good, in good condition to do so. And what I mean by that is that if you have really shallow uh, areas of your dam, uh, it means that you're going to get a lot of wind and wave action which is potentially going to constantly be stirring up the muddy, bottom on the, uh, the muddy water on the bottom. So that probably means that it's not a good candidate for flocking and clearing because it's just going to come back. And it's very important that you look at all these issues because there's no point in spending your money on flocking or clearing a dam if you haven't addressed the underlying issues and it's going to come back again with muddy water relatively quickly. So erosion uh, from the bottom in shallow water is a key factor. Another one is erosion of the banks. So if you have unvegetated or just bare earth banks on the side of the dam, it means that when you get the prevailing wind that's going to be bashing up against that bank, that the soil from the banks is going to start uh, coming back into the water and muddying, muddying up the water. And that's also going to potentially cause you issues with erosion. So you should always plant out your banks with non-invasive plant species, or put down riprap, uh, which is basically just uh, just gravel, um, large gravel, sort of you know fist-sized gravel and larger, um, so that when the the wind and wave action does buffer or batter against your, your dam, that that acts as a buffer and takes the uh, the risk of erosion out. Other things that can cause your dam to muddy up are animals. So that can come from, uh, from stock cattle or horses or sheep accessing the dam, you want to keep them out because they're just going to be getting into the dam, stirring up the mud, making your water muddy. But the other thing that they're doing that you don't want going on in your dam is they're crapping everywhere. So that crap, animal crap, is going to eventually lead to pollution problems and encourage algae, algae to grow. So there's going to be other issues there that you need to uh, address when it comes to animals. So the best thing is to keep animals out of the dam and just stick in a little pump. You can get solar pumps now and water trough and just uh, you know, let your animals drink from troughs rather than in the dam itself. Other animals that can cause issues with, with muddy dams are, are yabbies. Uh, yabbies will burrow, so uh, it's okay to have a few yabbies, they shouldn't cause an issue, but if you've got a dam with, with loads and loads of yabbies, you're likely to end up with turbidity problems with muddy water. So it's a good idea, as best you can, to trap them, um, purge them for a couple of days in some fresh water, and then have yourself a good feed. Uh, just keep the number of, numbers of yabbies down quite low. Uh, other animals that can cause issue are carp. So if you've got carp that's naturally come in from a dam, maybe you're in a, a chain of ponds from a, a creek that's overflowed or something like that, uh, you really do need to, to try your best to get the carp out. I know it's nearly impossible, but uh, there are ways and means that you can try and get them out. So try and get them out as best you can. Uh, and whatever you do, don't put carp in your dam. They 
just cause so many problems. Carp, while they're natural feeding behaviour, they actually uh, suck water in uh, through their mouths and try and push it out through their gills and they have these things called gill rakers and they try and filter all the, the material that they want to feed off out of these gill rakers. So it's a natural feeding behaviour to actually extract uh, muddy water and sift it through um, and then spit it out and move on to the, to the next, next area. So they're always going to be dirtying up your dam. Uh, and that's the same with koi. Uh, koi are essentially carp, so you certainly shouldn't stop koi in an earthen dam because they're also going to breed like rabbits and, and, and end up causing issues further down the track. So, uh, and also when it comes to erosion, you want to make sure that any gullies or uh, streams, wherever the, the water's coming in, that that's also well uh, vegetated or uh, has rocks and root wraps so that it slows down and hopefully lets the, uh, the soil part will settle out before it hits the dam. So they're some of the things that you need to think about before you go and flock because, like I said, there's no point in flocking if you haven't addressed these issues and the next big rain that you get, you end up with a bunch of muddy water again.